Good yes. evening, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Tania Berretta. I'm the director of the Master Hope, and welcome uh, to this session where we are going to get to know a bit better the Master Hope of the Social Change School, to get to know some of the uh, team members uh, of the Hope Master and of the school, and uh, um, present some of the key uh, components uh, of the Master. Uh, we're going to be together for an hour or so, uh, doing some uh, presentations first, and then leaving the second part of the session, uh, let's say 20 minutes, 25 minutes for your questions, okay? So um, again, good evening, good afternoon. My name is Tania Beretta, I'm the director of the Master Hope, and I'm a um, member of the advisory board of the Social Change School. Uh, we are going to make a quick round of presentations of the other team members, so I pass the word to Greta Tomezani. Good evening, good afternoon everyone. Thank you so much, Tania. My name is Greta Tomezani and I am HOPE Master Coordinator. So I leave the floor to Matthias. Good evening, guys. My name is Matthias Rodriguez. I am part of the Social Change School as the part of the enrollment process. I'm the I'm one of the staff that is currently in Madrid, Spain. I will leave the off the floor for Federica. Thank you, Matthias. Uh, good afternoon and welcome uh, to be here. I'm very happy to see you here. And uh, I'm the coordinator of uh, the CDS that will be the career development service that will accompany you uh, on, on uh, all the, the, the people in of the master um, and enrolling in the development path of your future career. Excellent, thanks everybody. And again, welcome, welcome all to this session. Um, I'm going to spend a few words about the Master Hope, uh, which, uh, um, well, which started, which was started and launched with the first uh, edition in 2014, uh, designed by uh, some of the most uh, bright uh, brains of the humanitarian sector in Italy, uh, Marco Bertotto, who uh, then was with uh, Agire and who's now uh, with MSF, and Lodovico uh, Mariani, who's now working for Un Ponte Per. Uh, I joined the master uh, immediately after uh, with a role as a lecturer and coach for the project work, uh, which we are going to speak about later on. And I became the director uh, three years uh, ago. Uh, the master is, uh, one of its kind in Italy, in the Italian humanitarian sector, and uh, we consider it as been among the three top ones uh, in Europe, uh, together with uh, Bioforce and uh, NOAA. Um, I'm going to ask Greta now to give you a snapshot of what uh, the master is about. Some of you already know it, some of you uh, have already got information about it, but we would like to give you again a snapshot of the main elements, the didactic elements of, uh, of the masters. Greta, please, thank you. Thank you very much, Tania. Uh, so I will share my screen just to show you a very simple slide. Um, what I would like to do now is that just to give you a brief overview of the didactic path of uh, Hope Master. Uh, so, as you might have seen from the brochure, the didactic path is made of different areas. Each area is related to a macro topic, okay? So, in this case, Hope Master has seven areas. Um, of course, I'm not including the, the, um, the first area, which is called uh, Ready to Impact, and it is the first meeting um, when the master is launched and starts. Uh, the first area is uh, uh, called Scenario and is made of a workshop focusing on an introduction to social change, to the main trends in the humanitarian and uh, development sector, as well uh, as trends um, regarding uh, donors and in general financial flows in the sector. Uh, then there is a second part, which focuses more on um, humanitarian aid. So um, on milestones in the history of humanitarian aid, uh, principles, uh, main actors, and uh, the coordination among them. So 
um, it, it sets the, the basis for you to better understand in general the humanitarian sector. Uh, then there is Area 2, uh, where you get more familiar with the um, humanitarian sectors and standards. And here we um, refer mainly to uh, steer standards. Um, this area um, basically gives you access to uh, online materials on, uh, on steer standards, and um, it will uh, imply um, completing an online course regarding uh, them. Uh, then in area three, uh, which is called disaster management, you get an introduction to uh, humanitarian and disaster management programming, uh, including uh, project identification and formulation. Uh, this area is key uh, because you get to know better some uh, tools in uh, um, project planning and management in emergency response. Um, and this will be very useful uh, for the project work. You see it here linked with an arrow um, because what actually we wanted to convey with this short presentation is that the project work, um, which will be explained in detail um, when, uh, when the master starts, is uh, basically an opportunity for you uh, to uh, put into practice, adapt and adopt the references and the tools you get to, uh, to know throughout the master path. So um, this, uh, then this starts from Area 3, Disaster Management. Then there are uh, two areas which are mainly linked to um, your development as professionals, which are management uh, development and an area focused more on career plan and personal branding. And then area six um, is uh, an introduction to humanitarian finance and logistics. And again, you get an overview of the um, main tools and how uh, to adapt them regarding um, um, human and uh, economic resources uh, planning. Um, the, the seventh area is called uh, working in emergencies. And again, is uh, uh, an area somehow that goes deeper into the topics introduced in the area scenario uh, because it, uh, um, uh, it gets deeper into the key trends in international humanitarian aid uh, and on some aspects of uh, needs assessment and the gender perspective in humanitarian action. Um, so, as I was saying before, um, you, we invite you to see these areas and interconnected among each other and linked to the project work as an opportunity to um, apply all the tools or the references that, uh, um, that are introduced throughout the, the master. Then, of course, uh, um, I'm available also in the uh, 30 minutes of uh, Q&A at the end of our presentation to answer questions regarding um, other aspects of the didactic path. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Greta. Uh, I would like to just take the opportunity to complement with a few additional uh, um, information. Um, first of all, the formula of the master is a blended formula, so there are activities which are organized in presence, other activities which are organized online. Um, the approach uh, throughout the didactic path wants to be a highly participatory approach, okay, which uh, fully relies on your participation and uh, uh, this is something that uh, uh, we uh, stimulate uh, uh, as much as we can. Uh, also, thanks to the fact that uh, uh, our teachers, our lecturers, uh, our tutors are humanitarian professionals, which have uh, many years of experience uh, in the field with uh, humanitarian organizations uh, and which really bring to the table, bring to the lessons, bring to the activities, uh, critical uh, issues uh, and uh, uh, aspects uh, which are currently on the international debate. 
So the master is not just an opportunity uh, to have better knowledge of uh, the theoretical uh, references, uh, et cetera, et cetera. As Greta said, those are the foundations. We definitely cover that. But the approach really is a very uh, practical, pragmatic one, which hopes to uh, contribute to form the humanitarians of, of the future. Yeah. Um, Okay, and uh, uh, with today's opportunity, we wanted to take also the chance to uh, present a bit more uh, into details uh, an activity uh, which is very dear to us and which will enrich the didactic path uh, of the master, uh, which is the field training period. And uh, I would like to leave the floor to my colleague Federica to provide you a bit of an outline uh, about this. Thank you, Federica. Thank you, Tania. Yes, uh, the, the school started uh, its activity in 1997. So uh, we can uh, assume that we have uh, a very big experience in, in the field of a humanitarian sector. So with this experience, we got some very deep partnership with the organization because the organization are really partner for us. I mean, we, we count on more than 30 a big partnership and we are trying to focusing on uh, having more and more uh, big partner with us partner means that we change service we ch we change we exchange um, uh, competencies uh, knowledge so as tanya and greta said the the lecturer are coming from the, the directly to this uh, from the sector from this organization that face uh, day by day uh, problems in, in, in the field, activities, uh, uh, disaster management, and um, all the, uh, the, the big problems that we face with the vulnerable people inside the humanitarian sector. So with this experience, with this partnership that we have, we got uh, um, got commit, a big commitment from the organization. So they, they, the 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 main thing that we exchange between us and the organization is the value of the people that train. I mean, the organization are, um, are comfortable in the sense that they uh, trust the master because they, they know uh, by their lectures, by our experience, they know that we can prepare people in, in a proper way to be sent to the field because working into the field is not a joke, it's very complicated, it requires a lot of um, important skills. And, and with this um, value that can offer, the organization trusts us. And in, this, in, this, um, in, in the last months that we faced this, this big problem as the pandemic, um, we uh, strengthened the partnership with them. So, these are the some of um, the, the, the main the main uh, big um, characteristics that we have in terms of partnership with them. Um, so these uh, facts allow us to uh, organize um, this very important experience that we can offer to the students. It means that the students have the, the the opportunity to go directly to the field and work in a direct exposure in a humanitarian work. So this, this means that uh, all the things that you will that you have learned into during the, 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 the master path, you can directly apply and uh, directly uh, put your hands uh, in, in the reality and try to um, train yourself direct directly into the concrete uh, cases and in concrete system. So it's a big, big opportunity that we can offer to the students after the, the path of the, 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 stu the study path. And the organization can ensure us um, the quality of work because we, of, of course, we have chosen uh, the, the, the best that we have. I mean, they are uh, all the uh, all international organization that are, is, in managing disaster and uh, humanitarian uh, work. So the period is not in, uh, in Italy, is directed to the, into the field, not in the Italian headquarters as we did before. 
um, but and it can give you the opportunity to face directly um, with the humanitarian issues. And uh, the periods uh, can be from um, to three up to six months. It depends on the organization um, agreement. And uh, of course, the, the every every part of this um, um, this service is well organized. It means that you will have insurance uh, or visa or uh, everything is uh, organized in, in in terms of ensure you the security and, uh, and things like that. So I, I cannot go deep deeply inside of the, the, the specific issues, but for me, it is in, the important thing to communicate to you is the chance that you can have um, to go direct in, into the field and uh, um, working with the most important organization, international, of course. Okay. Thank you very much, Federica. Um, I guess now we can already open uh, for questions uh, from your side. If you have them, feel free to, um, you can write in the chat, of course, but uh, if you feel like, don't be shy and uh, to take the floor and, uh, and ask your question directly. Yeah, and as we wait uh, for the participants to make up their minds and share uh, questions. Um, I wanted to highlight uh, something um, as presented by Federica regarding the uh, field training period, uh, which is part of the master didactic path. So this is quite important in the sense that it's something that the master offers to all the students as part of the student's registration, okay? It's not something uh, which uh, will have to be seen based on the students' uh, uh, expectations or depending on potential agreements, et cetera, et cetera. Let's call them internship or stage or anything, which is then part of the career service, which is, let's say, still part of the service that we provide to the students, but it's uh, happening, uh, let's say, as a second tranche of the services that we offer. This is something which is part of the didactic path of the master and it's offered to all the students that are enrolled uh, to the course. I think this is uh, important to highlight because uh, it's going to make the master one of its kind uh, in, uh, in the market. And uh, Let's wait for doubts or questions that you may have. Yeah, I have two questions. First of all, uh, hi everyone. My name is Mattia and thank you for this meeting. Um, the first question relates to the didactic areas. I wanted to know, how are we going to be evaluated during the the master? I mean, are there exams or is it just based on our participation or any other, I don't know, feature? Like the second question uh, relates to experience on the field instead. I wanted to know how are we going to choose the organization we are going to work with? I mean, how, will we be able to choose our organization according to our preference or is it like up to the organization to choose the student? Thanks. Thank you, Mattia. So I'm going to leave the floor to Greta for clarification on the first part and then uh, to Federica and partly myself on the second. Greta, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Tania. Uh, thank you, Mattia, for your question. Uh, yeah, there are ways you are evaluated not only through your participation. Uh, so as I was mentioning before, the didactic path is made of areas. Each area uh, has usually um, two types of evaluation. Some, uh, so every area has an exam, which is a multiple choice exam that you can access on the didactic platform. Okay. Um, and the second type of uh, evaluation uh, is present only in some areas and they are um, 
group assignments. Um, I can make an example. Uh, there is an area which I have presented before, which is called the disaster management. And the evaluation of this area is done both uh, through a multiple choice exam that you can do uh, individually and through uh, a group exam exercise, um, which is related uh, to the tools and the topics that are introduced uh, during the workshop. Uh, then um, the, exactly the percentages of the weights of the different types of evaluation uh, in your final evaluation, uh, I mean, in your personal evaluation as a student will be explained uh, during the first meeting. Um, but this is uh, basically how, um, I mean, these are the two main types of evaluation for each didactic area. Then um, there are also other items which will be kept into account um, related to, for example, um, other exercises that are not strictly related to areas. There is an ex exercise called a SWOT analysis challenge. Um, and there are also, um, there is also a peer-to-peer -peer evaluation uh, which is taken into account in the final uh, personal mark. Uh, but yes, basically the main message I want to convey is that exams and group assignments are uh, the two ways to, to be evaluated in the area. Is it uh, clear or do you have more, um, would you like a um, better clarification on this aspect? It's all clear, thanks. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Greta. And uh, just to uh, again uh, add a minor thing uh, on top of everything is uh, that the students are also uh, will also go through a peer to peer evaluation. So uh, this is something which is again quite uh, peculiar to the master in the sense that uh, um, throughout the master part, uh, we work on different type of skills uh, and as part of the soft skills development, there is a leadership, uh, leadership capacity, team leadership, uh, and this is a way how we nurture uh, that type of skills. So during the group assignments, um, uh, every student will have the opportunity uh, to be evaluated by its peer and uh, at the same time to evaluate uh, uh, in, in a specific case of uh, the team leadership, the, the leader. So uh, the evaluation doesn't come only from the lecturers, the teachers of the different activities and assignments, but also by the companions, by, by the student uh, fellows. Yeah. Thank you, Tanya. Yes, and adding on the top of this, it's not strictly related to the type of evaluation of the areas. Also, the project work is uh, is evaluated, obviously. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. The, the project work is, as I was saying, uh, is uh, is a simulation. Is a simulation of what happens during the project development. So, what happens when we develop uh, a humanitarian intervention? Uh, everything is simulated, so it's, uh, it's a role play. Uh, it goes throughout different months, uh, and we reach uh, uh, the final exam with a product, uh, which is uh, uh, the project developed. So the humanitarian interventions uh, in a package, which would be ready for submission to a fictional donor or to be presented to, to, the, to its own organization. Okay, Federica, would you like to clarify a bit on the second? Yeah. part of Mattia's question. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Mattia, let me say it is a, a very good question because yes, uh, we uh, explain you a little bit. Um, in uh, the career service, it's, it is mentioned in this way because it's a, prop, it's a specific service. It means that it's composed by steps and by a specific moment that um, uh, will allow us to, uh, be, to focus on your skills on your desire for the future, on your uh, development plan. In, in particular, uh, we'll have uh, a moment that it's called um, personal development plan in which we you can um, express all your preferences and desire in terms of thematic areas, um, uh, countries, uh, pre preferred countries, preferred organization. Yeah, you can express your opinion. 
Nevertheless, uh, we are doing uh, a matching in terms that we uh, need to, uh, to assess also the necessity and the needs of the organization. So uh, if the question is we can choose, the, the, the answer is it, you cannot properly choose, but we will do uh, the, best, the best as we can to properly match your desire with the, the necessity and the needs of the organization. It means that we will do everything to, um, to make the, your, uh, your dreams come true in terms of countries, thematic areas, and type of organization. But uh, because of this, the importance of this train, this 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 training uh, period in the in the field, we need to uh, understand the needs of the organization. So it is a matching. It is a matching between your uh, desire and the needs of the organization. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mattia. If there are more questions, uh, we are. Um, I happy. have one. Um, hello, everybody. I'm Sharon. Uh, uh, Sharon, please go ahead. Thank you for this meeting. Um, I was actually wondering if you could uh, give us some examples of, um, um, you know, activities or kind of responsibilities that people that us students will have in the training period in the field. Um, so what kind of a role um, students usually have once there? I know that we are, um, you know, just recently graduated, so our responsibilities um, might be not too huge. But I was just um, curious about, um, you know, what kind of job um, will actively be done in, in the field? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the, um, it depends on the uh, some some factors. Of course, it depends of your uh, preparation, of your seniority, uh, and it depends on the necessity uh, in, in during that time of the organization. Um, the, the the good answer is that uh, every organization has got their principle and their approach in terms of including. Uh, people working with them. There are some organizations that prefer uh, the preference to have a junior professional just to train them from the beginning and try to, to, to may, uh, include them in the staff uh, for the future. If the, the person is good and is, uh, is uh, considered to be a good resource, maybe in the future will be, uh, can, be can stay there. So some organizations prefer to um, take a junior professional and train and try to give them uh, general tasks in terms of supporting. But it depends on the organization. It's not, there's not a fixed tool. It depends on your seniority. But the, the, the one thing that I can say is that the work is directly related with your profile and with the needs of the organization into the humanitarian issues. Uh, Tania, I don't know if you yeah, want to add yeah. something. Yeah, mm -hmm. thanks Federica. And uh, I totally understand uh, this question and uh, what's inside, I kind of read it through the lines. Um, so Sharon, um, it's all what Federica said. Um, it pretty much depends on the profile of the student at the end uh, of the uh, master uh, didactic path in class. Uh, and it depends on the match with the organization. So it depends also how the hosting organization organize their work in the field, their priorities, what time of the year uh, the field training period happens to be, depending on the time of the year, there will be different tasks that the organization in the field have to accomplish. So uh, it also depends, again, by the type of the work that the organization does. So if the country office, if the field office is more um, kind of a technical organization or more a managerial type, of uh, support. Um, so let's say that uh, when it comes to responsibilities, um, 
for sure there will be um, a supervision of the three to six months period, which is uh, ensured by uh, a member, a permanent member uh, of the organization team in the field. But the tasks can, again, vary depending on the profile and on the needs of the organization at that particular time. They can fall under reporting, they can fall under monitoring, they can fall under operations. So uh, being exposed and help out the operational team on logistics, finance, administrative tasks, et cetera, et cetera. What's the most important uh, uh, thing about this is that you are going to be exposed to what is the reality of uh, a field office in the field. Those tasks can include accompany the country director to several meetings and take notes, but at the same time, to do some monitoring assignments uh, uh, with the monitoring team. So pretty much depends on, on the case uh, uh, that uh, the case of the organization and the time that you're going, you going to join. Perfect, it's, it's super clear. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Thank you, Sharon. And again, as we wait for uh, uh, more questions, uh, um, I wanted to take the opportunity of uh, Sharon's question to stress again um, the reasons uh, and where we are coming from uh, when we um, develop and we build this opportunity as part of, uh, of uh, uh, the services that the master offers to, to, to its new students. Um, the need to uh, give you the opportunity to be exposed, okay? And I purposely use the word exposure because as Federica said, this is a, uh, this is a very kind of, of, of job. It's a very unique type of job. It's a very unique uh, field, uh, sector of work. Uh, we acknowledge the fact that uh, uh, if you enroll and uh, uh, you become uh, master's students is because uh, you want to be humanitarian so this is what you want to do in the future and we know that uh, it's deep in the hearts of uh, you all or most of you to have that chance so to go beyond the online slides and uh, the uh, stories told by us, by some of the lecturers, and really feel it and see it with your eyes. Uh, life in the field is, uh, it could be uh, what you have dreamt of. It could be much better. It could be something you didn't expect, and it's just right to give you that opportunity. From my side, and uh, I know that my colleagues now will start rolling their eyes. I can just add that it's the most beautiful job in the world. And I say this every single time and after 20 years I've been doing it. And my heartfelt wish is that you will be able to say the same and feel it in, in 20 years. And what it's, it's what the master would like to, uh, to help you uh, to do. Yeah, I totally agree, yeah. It's true that uh, this work make, makes you happy, really happy, and uh, uh, it, it's a sort of vocation and, and uh, enrich your, yourself uh, as a human being, enrich your capacity to face um, problems, enrich your ability to listen to the others, uh, apart the, the work and the job in itself, I mean, apart the technical um, uh, actions and the technical skills that you would uh, would be required to do, but it enriches totally uh, your person and uh, give you the opportunity to to be a little bit different. I mean, uh, not because we are different, but because we develop a sense of global humanity that can allow us to relate in a, in a different way with people.
Okay, I have another question. <laughs> okay, I'm conscious that I'm applying in a very peculiar period, like in the middle of a pandemic. So my question is, if we came back to national lockdowns and travel restrictions, would you be would we be granted the chance of an experience on the field, even if like postponed down the line? I mean, or is it just one year master and that's all? Thanks. I can go okay. ahead or you- Yeah, uh, yeah I no, can please start. go ahead, please go ahead. Uh, again, uh, very yeah. practical question, Mattia, thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, of course, Mattia, we, we are there. In, in the field to 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 give to the opportunity to to manage disaster to manage emergencies or catastrophes so we need to be helpful for the field if the uh, the, the situation there is uh, getting worse because there is a, a new pandemic or a new phase of pandemic uh, we, we need to understand the needs of the people there. So we did uh, last uh, with the last phase of pandemic is that of course we could not send people uh, abroad directly, but we freeze and we now are getting um, we are taking these people, the, the students and the fellows, and, and try to start again with this new possibility. So. We, we cannot be a problem for, for the field or for the, the, the people that we, um, we service. But of course, the master has a, a contract and we try to, uh, to ensure, ensure you and we try to respect uh, as much as possible the condition of the contract. So in case of other uh, catastrophic things, we can freeze and start again when the, the, the bad situation is completed and uh, continue a part of the duration of the the master of the you will find in the contract some terms um a schedule of timing and we we because of organization aspect we put some data and some um, um uh, closed period, some um, deadline, of course. But if something will happen, we can review this uh, deadline and we can manage uh, in terms of um, giving you the possibility to, to start when the, 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 the bad situation is finished. Uh, Tanya, I did you want one add? Yeah, thanks, Federica. Uh, so let's put it this way. As I was mentioning before, really the training field period is an opportunity for you to, to be there and to live for real uh, what it means to be part of an organization work, to be part of an organization working in the field uh, at times when the world goes through a pandemic as well. Uh, there is obviously, uh, there are some assumptions, uh, like for any project, uh, there is uh, the, the so-called close of force measure, which uh, uh, may put things on hold if again the situation gets worse, uh, but I would say that it pretty much depends on the situation of the particular uh, hosting country, okay? And... Uh, uh, I mean, we could expect uh, that uh, the world, uh, uh, let's say, continues its battle against coronavirus uh, and uh, there won't be a worldwide uh, lockdown. I also want to say a couple of more things. Uh, the first one is that uh, um, humanitarian aid uh, needs and uh, the situation, the humanitarian needs uh, in the world, uh, well, got dramatically worse during the pandemic, okay? Because uh, uh, no need to say that uh, the pandemic uh, uh, did exacerbate uh, uh, issues, uh, uh, problems, uh, uh, situations uh, which were already uh, uh, serious and critical. Uh, there is a dire need of humanitarian organizations to be there. So the humanitarian work didn't stop during the pandemic. Obviously, some modalities had to be reviewed, okay? So remote management, et cetera, et cetera. At the same time, one of the hot issues 
that uh, the school is uh, uh, taking care of with the hosting organizations is about security, okay? So every case will have to be managed uh, considering the context of the country, considering the context and the setup uh, of the organization, okay? But uh, uh, as Federica said, the uh, ambition, the effort is going to be to ensure you uh, to, 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 to go through this opportunity, okay? If uh, force cause measure, this is not going to be possible uh, during uh, the expected time frame, the school will do it, uh, uh, its utmost uh, to, to ensure you uh, as soon as then it's possible. And then if I, want, I mean, can add one thing is that first, for example, I'm working for an organization that has project in Peru. And um, unfortunately, Peru has a very bad situation facing coronavirus. And um, we uh, work with the national service, um, the civil service, sorry, international one as well. And uh, we uh, sent some people because they were allowed to go, but then they were stuck in the headquarters there. So for them, was not an opportunity to stay there because they were closed totally. So it's not only a, a problem with the organization itself, but the, it's a problem for you that you cannot learn anything because you that those people were there doing nothing because they were stuck totally. So we want to ensure that you really can uh, take the maximum from this experience. And in case uh, we will, uh, we will need to, fr to freeze the, the time and put, to postpone the experience afterwards. Thanks, Federica. Thank you, Mattia. Thank you very much. I would like to read out loud the, the question from Anna. So thank you very much, Anna, for your question. Um, if I may ask, during training period as students, do we have the chance to go in the field? Thank you. Uh, Federica, you'd like to, to answer? Yeah, um, this is, yeah, this, this is the, the, the issues that we are uh, talking about now. The, 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 uh, the idea is that the, the training period will be directly into the field. So this is uh, the specific a requirement of this training period, the field training period, we call them with an acronym on that express the, the concrete, uh, the concreteness of the, the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, we'll be there, not in, in the national quarter. If I may jump in, I, I would like to highlight what both Federica and Tania were saying. Um, it really depends on what the organization is doing and also on the meaning we attribute to field, which is also a terminology very much debated nowadays in the humanitarian and development sector. Um, so the idea is that uh, you contribute where uh, your skills, where your time is um, is needed also by the organization and matches the organization activity. Um, so it very much depends on what the organization is doing and it can uh, uh, imply both some office work uh, abroad and some work more as you might intend as in the field, but it really depends on what the organization is, is doing. Uh, Tania and Federica, if you'd like to, um, what I have understood from your question, Anna. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's called the field. Uh, we have, uh, yeah, the humanitarian sector is uh, evolving on a daily basis. So even in terms of terminology, but uh, we wanted to use what's currently used in the sector. So the field is uh, what uh, we mean by uh, countries of operations, okay, where actually the activities are implemented and the services are delivered to the persons uh, in need, okay. Uh, 
where the emergency, the crisis, uh, the disaster uh, happens. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I just would like to point out something that is not strictly related to, to didactics. Uh, just remind you about uh, the different types of scholarship opportunities uh, for which uh, Matthias is the focal point. So uh, if you have questions or uh, would like to understand more about this opportunity, I invite you uh, to, to contact him uh, at the email that uh, you might, um, email address you might already know. Um, which is the enrollment at socialchainschool.org. I will write it in the chat uh, as well. And if there are more questions, uh, feel free to, to jump in. I see Anna has a, um, a question. Would you like to try and, and, and speak if your connection in the network allows to do so? Thank you. Thank Sorry, you. I had another question, if I yes, may. Yes. Um, it was about the project work. And specifically, I was wondering um, how the group of people we have to, we will work with uh, will be chosen. So if it's up to us or it's up to you. And also if, uh, how much freedom do we have to choose the topic of this project work or if it's, um, you know, directed um, by you somehow, thanks. Thanks, Sharon. Uh, Greta, you thank like you very to go much, first. Sharon. Yeah, we can <laughs> we can complement. Uh, yes. I think both uh, Tanya and I can uh, can answer this question. Uh, I say Tanya because uh, um, she has wide experience uh, in uh, um, accompanying this uh, uh, project work pathway of many hope students, so she has lots of experience on this. Um, so regarding your first first question, Sharon, uh, usually uh, the school uh, decides uh, the groups and um, it's mainly to um, enable some balance regarding, for example, professional experience and, and other aspects. Um, and uh, regarding the freedom you have, the first step of the project work um, is uh, uh, for you and your group to come up uh, with uh, a project idea um, regarding uh, the crisis, uh, the type of emergency you would like to focus on, uh, the um, geographic area and uh, the main um, sector or sectors of intervention, the activity you would like to do. So uh, where you would like to go, which crisis and what do you want to do? Uh, so in this sense, really, um, there is some freedom and it's an aspect that we really like to highlight because it really enables you to draw on your interest, on what you're passionate about uh, as a group, of course. So as uh, Tanya and I say, uh, when we present the, um, uh, the project work, it's also a matter of finding a compromise uh, between in all, among all the group members, of course. Um, and this is also part of the skills uh, we invite you to develop uh, throughout this path. But uh, yes, the short question is, uh, you have freedom to decide um, main, the main aspects of the project work. Then uh, there is, of course, uh, um, in specific moment, a feedback uh, from the project work coach. Um, who um, gives you some kind of direction. So maybe if you end up choosing a very specific and complicated crisis and geographic context, maybe uh, the coach can help you um, narrow or um, 
make your choice in terms of geographic area, sector, and crisis wider. So you are you have freedom, and you are supported in um, developing the project autonomously. So, um, but Tanya, of course, uh, if you want to add something on this, uh, feel free. Yeah. Ah, piece of my heart to the project work, really. Um, and as we speak, uh, we are almost closing uh, the project work period uh, with uh, uh, the class of one master's edition. And uh, just yesterday, we launched the start of the project work on uh, with another class. Um, so uh, the group composition is uh, um, usually decided by the school, by the master. Uh, it's made, as, as Greta was saying, on different uh, criteria. Uh, to maximize, I mean, if not ensure, to maximize the balance of this group, considering uh, the gender balance, balance, uh, age, um, uh, yeah, professional background, uh, and observations uh, that, uh, again, uh, the, 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 the coordinator and other lecturers have made uh, about the class dynamics uh, until that moment, okay? Um, the project work gives you the opportunity also to work in team. So the composition of the group, and uh, thank you for this question, because the composition of the group and the uh, and, and building the group is uh, uh, really, a, well, quite uh, uh, an intensive type of work, uh, both on the part of the coordinator of the the coach, but also on the part of the group itself. Um, the, the liberty, the freedom uh, to choose the crisis uh, is, uh, is full. Uh, the, the coaching uh, will help you navigate uh, throughout the process of building an intervention, an humanitarian intervention in the context of the crisis that you have chosen with the target group population that you have chosen. Of course, uh, uh, we don't like to use the word direction, but uh, there is obviously guidance uh, there. Uh, it lasts uh, quite a few months, so it's really a process. And uh, throughout this process, uh, there are uh, high tides, uh, low tides, uh, different type of waves, uh, and uh, we navigate uh, through it uh, uh, together. But it's very, very exciting, very, very exciting. Thank you, Tanya. And thank you, Sharon, for, for the question. Okay, I, I guess we still have a couple of minutes before wrapping up the, the session, if I'm not wrong. So if there is a last question, feel free to, to ask. In any case, I uh, wanted to reassure everybody that uh, if there are additional questions, uh, you make up your mind, and you have questions that you didn't uh, ask during the session, please uh, don't hesitate uh, to get in touch with the master. Uh, we will try to answer. Uh, there's going to be a lot of information and details which are given, uh, which are given um, at the beginning of the master course, uh, obviously. So uh, again, um, I, I trust that we will have the opportunity to uh, embark uh, on this uh, all together and uh, uh, to see you, to meet you, to get to know you all very soon. I don't think that there are additional questions. Mm. So I would like to thank my colleagues uh, for joining us today, uh, Greta, uh, Federica, uh, Matthias, and I would like to thank you all for participating to it and showing interest. I would like to thank you for your questions. And again, as I was saying, really looking forward to meet you and to work together very soon. Thank you very much, Tanya, and thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you. Thank you all. Ciao, Thank you. ciao everybody.